Hello, today we're going to be starting section 2-7, which is called the X factor. And for today, you will need um, an additional color pencil. So we need our typical red, yellow, green, but you'll also need a blue colored pencil. So pause the video for a second and go ahead and grab, well, more than a, few, a second, a few seconds, and grab a blue colored pencil to add in to your repertoire today of colors. All right, now that you have your colored pencils, today is Friday, October 4th. And again, we are starting section 2-7. We'll finish it up on Monday, so your homework for this section will be due on Tuesday. And what's happening is that Opt Optimus Quilt is accepting orders for rectangular blocks. Yesterday and um, Wednesday, we didn't just have squares and we ended up with, we had rectangles that we ended up with. Many customers wanted rectangular blocks that are bigger than the standard square block, but only on one side. For example, sometimes they want one side of the block to be a standard length, X, and the other side of the block to be two inches bigger. Draw and label this block. So we should be pretty um, old hands at doing this now. Of Here's our standard block, X by X with an area of X squared and that standard block is our red color okay now this one again she wants one side of the block to be standard length the other side of the block to be two inches bigger so we are going to extend just this one side of the block by two inches So we went up by two here. And uh, over the past couple of days, we've stopped drawing those individual strips, drawing it as one big chunk that's being added on. The area of that yellow rectangle right here, two by x, so this is two x. This length of this entire side is x plus 2. So now two expressions for area. One of them is just looking at the inside areas and adding up all those bits. So that there's x squared plus 2x. That's one expression for area. The other expression for area is to do length times width or just multiply the sides. So this side is x and this side x plus 2. So we'll have x times x plus 2. And there's our two expressions for area. If we look at this next one, sometimes the customers want one side of the block to be the standard length x with the other side of the block two inches less than the standard size. Ooh, less than. That's different. Let's go ahead and draw this standard block. Okay, now remember, even though we draw it as a 3x3, three three, it's really not 3x3. Three three. It's some unknown amount x by x. So we have a tough time in here trying to subtract sides off when we do something visual like this. So what we're going to have to do is remember that 2 inches less would be like subtracting 2. And subtracting 2 is the same as adding negative 2. Okay, so it does get a little kind of funny here, but this is where the blue pencil is going to come in. So even though I'm drawing it bigger here, I'm going to represent this side as minus 2. So this block in here is really smaller than that one. And to show that it's smaller, 
We're not adding it on like we did up here with the yellow. We're going to make it smaller. That's where this blue comes in. So that yellow is when you're adding on sides, and we're going to use blue as taking away stuff. The area inside of there now is, this is a negative 2 times x, so this is negative 2x inside there. And again, the two expressions for area. Area, if we add up the insides, it's going to be x squared and a minus 2x. Outsides, oops, forgot to label this side over here. This whole side is an x and then minus 2. So using the sides, length times width, we have x times x minus 2. If you're a little bit fuzzy on that, that's all right. We have a bunch of examples coming up, and hopefully we'll be able to iron that out. If I'm going too fast for you, please feel free to pause the video and rewind it a bit, or just pause it and catch up. Looking to the next page here, there are many other size blocks requested with the lengths with the side lengths all based on the standard length x, draw and label each of the following blocks and write two equivalent expressions for the area of each block. So we're going to do this a bunch of times here. So one side is one inch less than the standard side, and the other side is two inches more. So we got a one inch less and a two inches more than the standard size. Well, let's go ahead and draw that standard size block. That standard size block is red with an area of x squared. Then we're going to do a side that is one less. So we still are going to draw it like it got bigger, but we're going to write that as a minus one here. So one less. If it's one less, if it's a negative here, that gets this blue. And this area in here is negative one x. The other side gets two more. So on the, we just, this side of the square, we're going to increase this side of the square. Big chunk we're going to add on to this time. Since we're adding, that's the yellow. That's like what we've been doing for, gosh, it feels like weeks, yes? That's 2x. Now we have this odd shaped figure here. We do need to make a rectangle out of this. So we're going to clean this up right here and make a rectangle. Now that one always gets green. But to figure out the area of that green box up here, we're going to have to realize that it's negative 1 across the bottom, negative 1 here, and it's a positive 2 tall. So a negative 1 times a positive 2, negative 2. Listing the side lengths, this side length is an x and then plus 2. This side length x minus 1. So now our figure's done, our two expressions for area. If we add up all the insides, we have an x squared, and then we have a 2x and a negative 1x. 2x and a negative 1x, that's plus 1x. And then we have this green, this minus 2. You don't have to write that one. If you want to, you can. You don't have to. You could just say x squared plus x minus 2. But I want to put the one there for now just so you see where it came from. 
And then the other expression for area is to multiply the sides. So x plus 2 times an x minus 1. All right. Let's take a look at this next one. One side is 2 less than the standard side. So sometimes I like to kind of go through and identify that color right there. 2 less than, that's going to be that blue one. The other side is 3 more than, so there's your yellow, than the standard size. So let's do our standard size block right here. Now, it doesn't matter which side of that standard size block is getting the two less than. The last time, we put the less than kind of along the bottom here. So this time, let's change it up. Let's put the two less than going up this way. It doesn't matter which side it goes on. I'm just going to change it up. That's a minus two. And that is blue because it was subtracted. that area in here, then negative 2x. I think maybe I should start using a black pen, especially with the blue. It's kind of hard to see the blue area on top of the blue coloring. I'll change it up on the next one. All right, so now three more. So let's go to the right three this time. So there's that chunk that's being added on. And that's yellow because that part was being added on. And that area is a positive 3x. And then completing out our rectangle. All right, figuring the area of that green rectangle in here. Positive 3 along the bottom. Negative 2 going up. So that area is a positive 3 times a negative 2, or negative 6. That side length, x minus 2. This one, x plus 3. Two expressions for area. If we add up all the insides, we have an x squared. Then I have a 3x and a minus 2x. 3x, positive 3, and a negative 2. It's another plus 1x, and then a minus 6. Here, if we look at the sides, x plus 3, and x minus 2. All right, let's take a look at this next one. One side is two more than the standard side, and the other side is three less than. So two more, three less. Okay, um, two more. Let's go this way. Two, three less. Well, this one I just started drawing everything before I started coloring. If you want to color each piece individually as you draw it, that's fine. I think sometimes actually that kind of help, kind of helps keep things organized a little bit there. So this block x squared, 
2x, there's a negative 3x. And then completing off the rectangle, And inside of here, this was a negative 6. I'm doing a little bit less talking as I go through here. And hopefully you're starting to do some of this all on your own. And you don't need me to lead you through every single step of the way. here, if we add up all the insides, we have an x squared. Oh, this time we have a positive 2 and a negative 3. Oh, it's exactly reverse of the last one. This one, the last one had a negative 2 and a positive 3. This one has a positive 2 and a negative 3. So when I add, combine like terms here, these guys give me a negative 1x. But we still have this negative 6 back here. It just happened the signs were reversed. And then writing the sides for area, we'll have x plus 2 times an x minus 3. Again, if I'm going too fast for you, please pause the video to catch up. All right, let's flip the page. There's a couple more here that we need to do. One side is three more than the standard size. The other side is four more than the standard size. Oops, forgot to turn this down. Sorry about that. One side is three more than. And the other side is, oops, there's a typo here. This should be four less. I want that to be four less than the standard size. Sorry about that. Okay, if you would like, you may pause the video, pause it, and then complete this setup, this rectangle on your own, then turn the video back on, fast forward until you get to the answer, and see if you got it right. You don't have to do that. I'm just giving you the option, if you would like to, Pause the video, go ahead, you do the coloring, fast forward, and see that you got it right. If you did make a mistake, then you're going to have to go back and fix it. Here's the three more. That's a big chunk there. There's the four less. That area is going to be minus 4x. X across the bottom, negative 4 going up. And then completing off this rectangle in green. And the area of that piece, 3 times a negative 4, so negative 12. Writing our two forms of area, adding up all the bits on the inside, x squared minus um, 1x, because that's a negative 4x and a positive 3, and then a minus 12. Writing the area as side lengths, we'll have an x minus 4 
and an x plus 3. Okay, one more. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and um, draw this one and then come back and check it, fast forward in a moment and check to make sure that you're right, that is perfectly fine. I am going to do this one a little bit differently though. Instead of adding on sides always to the right and up, I'm going to put my standard block up here. And now I'm going to do four more than. I'm going to go out this way. One, two, three, four. Uh oh, I forgot to color my standard block red. That one's x squared, this area 4x, and then the other side is 3 less, so I'm going to come down 3, if you are more comfortable doing them all the same way, that's perfectly fine. This area is minus 3x. And then the last bit, this little green chunk back here. Minus a 12. Oh, forgot to, oh, I did. I labeled them up there. I was going to say, I forgot to label this side. I'm so used to labeling down here. But I actually labeled it up there. So we're all good. That's x plus 4. This side, x minus 3. Adding the bits, x squared plus 1x minus a 12. And the sides x plus 4 times an x minus 3. Okay, uh, that's enough coloring for today, but let's clean up this page. Let's finish up this page. I'm going to have you look for something in a moment here. Um, an expression that has three terms in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, like this, x squared plus 1x minus 12, or up at the top, x squared minus 1x minus 12. That is called a trinomial. It has three terms. There's the prefix tri. Look back at the two expressions that you wrote for area in questions 3 through 7. And when you look at the answers for 3 through 7, so here's 3 right here x squared plus 1x minus 2, x squared plus 1x minus 6, x squared minus 1x minus 6. Up at the top of this page, x squared minus 1x minus 12, and then this one, x squared plus 1x minus 12. How can you tell if the middle term, so the coefficient of the x, is going to be positive or negative? So how can I tell in the beginning, before I write all this out, how could I tell just by reading the problem, if the middle term was going to be a positive, oh, I know I froze. You got to be kidding me. Okay, you're just going to have to listen because I can't restart it. It'll goof up the video. That's so weird. I didn't do anything. I'm so sorry. But it's kind of gross to see my hand up there. I'm sorry. Ugh. Um, anyhow, so what happens, I'm just going to have to tell you this because it's kind of freaking me out that the video froze. All right, if more is added on one side of the basic square than is subtracted from the other side, then the middle term is positive. You are just going to have to write that in. Let me say it again. If more is added on one side of the basic square than is subtracted from the other side, then the middle term is positive. Last time. If more is added on one side of the basic square 
then is subtracted from the other side, then the middle term is positive. If you need to hear it again, rewind. Thank you very much, and I'm sorry it froze at the end, but par for the course, it's pretty typical. Thanks for listening, and we'll have a nice weekend. I'll see you Monday.